Ah, the good old days of carrying around a heavy mount, using janky old luggage to store it and breaking your back to set it up, struggling to achieve the perfect balance, then breaking your back all over again while packing it up in the morning. Well, never again. So the AM5 is now our new main mount. It is much smaller and much lighter than our usual Atlas EQG here. And honestly, it's a game changer. It all fits in this one tiny case, which is crazy. And we've been using the DWO AM5 for a while, but you know, we wanted to get more knowledge and experience with it before we really talked about it. So now we feel confident to release an unbiased review about it. And this was our very first time using a harmonic drive mount. And honestly, we are impressed. So we're going to tell you more about the AM5 and uh, what's so great about it. Let's do it. So the ZW AM5 is a harmonic drive mount, specifically designed to be compact and easy to carry anywhere. It can track in both at as and equatorial mode. The mount is small, lightweight, and can be used without counterweights unless the telescope attached is very heavy. These features make the ZW AM5 an ideal portable mount for small to medium sized astrophotography setups. If you don't know how a harmonic drive mount differs from an EQG mount, it uses a strain wave gear instead of warm gears. The main differences are that it has no backlash, balancing the rig is not required, and you don't need counterweights, well, to an extent. It is much smaller and lighter, and so it can fit in a much smaller mount head. Also, they are going to work great in the long term without needing to maintain them. The only downsides really are that they cost more in relation to the max payload capacity and that you cannot manually slew them. We go over the specs of the mount much more in depth in our written review, but the most important thing you have to know is that the max payload capacity of the AM5 is 28.6 pounds without counterweight. If you add a counterweight, then you can have 44 pounds on there. So to compare both mounts, like a regular EQG mount and a, uh, the AM5, as you can see, both are about the same height when set up. And um, obviously the main difference here is that this one has a counterweight, this one does not need one, which is crazy. Uh, you can have a, a really good telescope here with no counterweight and have no issue whatsoever thanks to the harmonic drive, which is really insane. This one is much, much lighter. Uh, you can carry it around so easily, even with everything on top of it. This one is much, much heavier, and you definitely will... Not locked! Wow, that was not locked. We forgot to lock this because we were too focused on making this video, and once again, we make a mistake by not uh, paying enough attention to, to what's happening. Okay, now it's locked. Anyway, like I was saying, this one is much heavier, but this is, of course, much more compact and lightweight. And the other main difference is you cannot, this one you can screw manually very easily by unlocking the knobs here, like so, but this one you cannot. So there is no knobs, you cannot um, manually slew it. So if you end your night, make sure you don't forget to home it um, with your computer or SIR before uh, putting it away. So some little differences here are the hand controllers. So you'll see here with the AM5, it's a pretty basic controller, uh, truly just has two buttons and uh, toggle. Uh, so that's really different and very new for us. Whereas here we have this hand controller Oop. and a lot more is built into it. You know, you, you could really use this a lot more for visual stuff. You can slew to anything that you want. It's also really good to have uh, if you don't have a computer, that one you would need to. And then another thing that the AM5 does not have is a polar scope where this uh, Atlas does. You just unscrew this and you can uh, just use it to polar align easily, whereas you would need to have a computer to polar align with this. So other interesting little differences.
We already made a full unboxing video, but to summarize, the mount comes with its own carrying case, two Allen keys, the hand controller, the manual, and a USB cable. You can also purchase some add-ons, like the counterweight bar, the tripod, or the peer extension if needed. We go over these add-ons in depth on our written review, so be sure to check that out. So I'm going to go over the mount really quick, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough to show you guys the different knobs and different ports, just so you have an idea of uh, you know, the design of the mount. And so before we do that, as you can see here real quick, uh, this is the telescope I've been using for the past few weeks with the mount. And as you can see, no counterweight here, nothing. Even though there is a bunch of accessories on top here, like the heavy camera, the heavy and bulky guide scope. And yeah, the guiding has been perfectly fine, tracking, no issue. And uh, just having no counterweight is just so incredible. So let's go around the mount really quick and see uh, how it's designed. All right, so here on this side, we have a placement for something like the ASI Air, for example, or uh, anything else that you want to attach here. Then here we have the knobs for the telescope dovetail, uh, very smooth and nice. And if you flip the uh, mount around, this side has nothing, it's just a, a plaque with the name. So here at the back, you have the knobs to polar align manually. So here is to go left and right, and here is to go up and down. These two knobs are to unlock the axis. And here, uh, one thing to notice is you have to be very careful with this knob here because it will end up either like this or like this when you're done. And either way, you have to be careful not to have too many cables uh, dangling around because as the mount rotates, you might have cables getting stuck here. So be very careful with that. Uh, make sure your cable management is on point. And then here on this side, you have four ports. One is the USB port, one is auto guide, which was never used, one is the hand controller port, and one is the power port. Now that we know how the mount is designed, it is time to put it to the test. I was having some unrelated issues with the ASI camera that week, so I imaged with a QHY camera and used Nina to control the mount, which worked well. You can also connect to the mount's hand controller wirelessly using your phone or tablet, and that also worked very well. This is a night I was testing out the L Ultimate filter and imaged both the Wizard Nebula and the Omega Nebula. The guiding was between 0.7 and 0.8, which is not bad and I am sure it can get even better next time. I did not have to throw away any frames, and the stars looked perfectly round throughout the entire night, which is great. With this mount, the entire setup is so light that it can be picked up easily in and out of the house without breaking your back, which is fantastic. After trying the mount with a laptop for a few days, we decided to switch to the ASI Air, which makes things even easier. Using a ZW camera, guide cam, and electronic focuser, we connected all our equipment to the ASI Air, including the mount. All of this was done very easily, and the polar alignment with the ASI Air took just a few minutes. So using the mount with the ASI Air is very simple. Uh, in the app, all you have to do is go to mount, but don't go all the way down to find Z. Instead, go all the way back up, and you will find the ZW AM5. And once you're in, you're in. And of course you can use these uh, arrows here to move the mount around, just like any mount. And be sure to activate the uh, maiden flip over here. And if you go to settings, and those settings here, five and five, are the ones that are working for me. Um, really nice. So uh, hopefully they work for you as well. So try five and five. We matched the Pac-Man Nebula this time using the Ascar 6 nanometer filter. The result turned out great and, once again, the guiding was very good, around 0.66, and we did not have to trash any frames, which is what matters the most. The AM5 is 
really is a game changer. We will probably never use the EQG anymore or, I mean, it's just so heavy I'm compared so to that. I'm so sorry. It's true, like, you had a good run, but, like, seriously here, this one is definitely our new mount uh, for everything. And we match. <laughs> yeah, also. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it really is a, a huge difference. And, honestly, it feels really bad knowing that in the past 10 years we, we've been breaking our back with this one here. Um, but now, new newcomers in the hobby will have it so easy with this kind of mount because it's just so easy. It's Innovation just so easy. of technology, like technology at its finest. But we hope you like this review and uh, yeah, that was a, a great mount to review and we love it. And on top of that, you can go see our written review for more information. So we'll see you guys next time and uh, catch guys. Nice.